It's the time for a package from China and we're going to take a close look at this product called Xulu or how you freaking pronounce it. Let's go. So if you're wondering, does most of these packages come in like that? Yep, they are. Nevertheless, what are we going to get? That is what we're going to find out. We're going to do this unboxing together. We're going to have maybe some fun or we're going to have a lot of shenanigans. Nevertheless, I just wanted to see what are we going to get inside the box and... Oh man, I forgot my knife. I have no idea where my knife is. Doesn't even matter. We're going to do a quick unboxing. So this product is something I was really looking forward to check out here on the channel. The reason why, because this is something new. It's not like a very powerful device. It's something different. It's like magic. But what are we actually going to get? That is what I really wanted to unbox and find out. This is a completely different kind of a brand. I have never heard of it. And I was really curious of what are we actually going to get. Because this thing is one of the tiniest and a very powerful machine. So we do have like different kind of versions. This is the Zulu XR1 Lite. We also have a Max and a Pro, I'm saying it correctly. And we have all different kind of specifications, depending on what you want to do with it, because these things can be very powerful. Different kind of chipsets, some are a little bit older, but one of the things I want to check out, can we actually play with it and how is it with emulation? But let's unwrap the plastic and let's take a close look at the inside. It comes complete with carrying case. I think it's pretty damn awesome. I was looking for a solution to bring a mini PC to friends if you're having like a game party. And where a lot of the mini PCs are not very huge nowadays. This thing is so small. But it does come with the AMD Radeon version number 3. So I don't know if it's going to be powerful enough to run most of my games. I think for indie games it's going to be absolutely epic. Easy more. Yeah. But let's first talk about the specifications. The processor we're going to get is the AMD Ryzen 3 5300U. It's not the most powerful one. It comes with 4 core and 8 threads. Base frequency with turbo, the 2.6 GHz stable and 3.8 GB of turbo. AMD Ryzen RX Vega 6 and DDR4 3200 MHz dual channel. Nevertheless, the specification list is not the latest out there, but I really wonder how far we can push it and what can we actually play. I think the most appealing thing for me personally is that we're having a different kind of a design. And I mean, special, particularly when you're looking at the way how they pronounce, pronounce this, just by having a very cool, like new way to play. Bring this thing with you with friends and it comes with a beautiful, tiny, compact design. The power supply is just your typical power supply that you're going to get. This is the 19 volts, 3.42 amps. Now, nothing really fancy, just a normal plug. Then in here we're having the system itself with some pretty cool features. There come different kind of colors and one of them is green of course where you see over here. It comes with a tiny display at the front and the overall construction is quite genius. I've already seen some things. Overall we're going to get four USB ports at the back. We're going to get two HDMI out, RG45 at the back and the input for the power supply. At the front we're going to get an audio jack Type-C and we're going to get two USB ports. The XR1 Lite comes with the AMD Ryzen 3 mini PC chipset in the inside, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabyte PC Express SSD, and of course we can replace it if you want to. But that's not all, let's take a close look at the other compartment, what are we actually going to get. So here we're having the minimal, I must say the smallest Ryzen based PC in the world. It's quite a bold statement, but so far I know this is actually true. Let me know in the comments if you have found another one that has basically different and smaller. But here we're going to see the different colors you can get. The Storm White is also very cool, the Battleship Grey, a lot of cool looking different colors. Coming to get some stickers and here the mini desktop PC quick guide. Let's see, here we're going to get a filter and the filter that we're going to basically place in here for getting the dust out. It's quite interesting that they give you this. And here we're going to get ourselves all the other information. That's a foldable manual. I really hate these things by the way. But just and give you a quick explanation how you need to connect everything. What well, is kind of cool there, you're going to get actually a very nice looking HDMI cable with this. Man, look at this. Mm. But what is really a cool novelty, at the front we're going to get a very tiny display that will showcase the fan speed, but also the temperature itself. I particularly going to use this thing for indie games and just for party games. One of the old ones is Blaze Rush and this game runs of course without any problem on even a lower powered AMD Ryzen chipset. 
And this game, oh boy, I can tell you, this is a lot of fun. Next up, of course, Sonic Mania, another game that is not super demanding, but just wanted to check out how good rate or bad it will run on this mini PC. Fun cooperative game is one of those games like Hunt Down. You can just enjoy them together with a friend, old school like back in the 90s. And of course this game is like Sonic Mania, Street of Rage 4 and many other great titles. They run just fine on this. Just in my opinion, this thing is great for mini games. Watch out! Down the other! Come here, I'll show you. So okay, when it comes to let's say old school AAA games, let's say Street Fighter 4, I still love to play. These games will run absolutely great on 1080p and everything set to the highest setting. And I think when you're loving like me, the old fighting games or other games, they will run absolutely amazing even on a low spec AMD Ryzen chipset. Show me everything you have to offer. Are you ready? Fight! Sonic Boom! Do not hesitate. Sonic Boom! Ships are fighting. But if you're going to get in the latest games, there we're going to have a lot of trouble. You need to get it to very low settings, otherwise you're not going to get playable situations. And in my opinion, that is quite fortunate if you love to play an adventure game like Crash Bandicoot the Trilogy. So low resolution, everything put to low, you're still going to get not very long loading times and also an overall performance that is still playable between 50 and 60 FPS. But let's get into some emulation and when it comes to the old school stuff all the way up to Sega Saturn it's no problem whatsoever where I want to focus on some systems like PlayStation 2 to begin with. And I can tell you even on a low spec system like this it runs pretty damn great. Here we go. Round 1. Fight. <laughs> With PlayStation Portable and the PP SSPP emulator, I needed to mess around with it. I couldn't get this thing to run on full resolution, or in other words, like 10 times resolution, like we have seen with some of the system that was reviewed here on the channel. Due of like the lack of power, we need to scale it all the way back to six times. We have some dips with some cutscenes, but beside that, we did have a very good overall playable gameplay. With PlayStation 3, we're going to push the boundaries of this device simply because this is a low power system. But I was quite surprised to see how fast even the loading times is when you're actually going to boot up a game.
1080p i just wanted to see about how we can play it from xbox classic but i think when you're looking in the era of playstation 2 xbox classic gamecube you were going to have amazing performance even on this low power chip and that's i think very surprising and especially because this thing is so small it's going to be absolutely great But if you want to go into the Xbox 360, this device is not powerful enough. So there we're going to meet his limitations. And if you want to play stuff like this, we need to have way more power. So the light version of the Xulu is not the way to go to. It's just fun all the way up to, let's say, the Xbox, PlayStation 2 and GameCube. And some PlayStation 3 gaming, of course. I think when you're looking at the construction of this mini PC, that is absolutely an awesome piece of engineering. First of all, think about it, this is one of the tiniest AMD mini PCs I ever had here in the Wicked Studio. First of all, the design, you can just slide it out fairly easy. And when you're looking at it, the way how they produce this is absolutely um, stunning. Like the two PCBs at the side, we're going to get ourselves the LEDs or lighting up the side. But here we're going to get at the bottom the Wi-Fi controller. But the problem with this device is if you need to swap out the SSD. There we're going to have absolutely a lot of freaking shenanigans to get there because that is the nightmare of this thing. Where a lot of, let's say, mini PCs, you can just open it up fairly easy, but that is not the case over here. Everything has been attached with a couple of screws and four ribbon cables because there are two layers of main board. The first layer at the top is going to get ourselves the CPU GPU combination with a huge cooling. But at the bottom plate, there we're going to get all the other connections. And both of the PCBs are connected with these ribbon cables. So you need to get all of the freaking radio cables loose. Then we're going to get basically a disassembly of the system itself. Here we can see the bottom part can be removed. And there he is. There is the freaking SSD. So it's absolutely a lot of misery to rip this thing all apart if you want to replace it. Another thing is because of the compact size, there is no way of adding it to yeah, second storage capacity where we have at some other devices. So and a couple of things that you need to take consideration. And yeah, I think also when it comes to the RAM, same thing, you just need to remove the full thing, the top part, there we're going to find the RAM, but everything is so difficult to reach. For me, the light is absolutely more than enough. So when you're looking at all the positive and the negative sides, yeah, you need to decide for yourself, is this thing really worth picking up? Well, thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, and it would be great to see you in the next video.